Good evening, my name is Rudyard Griffiths and it is once again my pleasure to be your moderator tonight. It's terrific to have you as virtual participants in tonight's proceedings. And hello to you, the over 3,000 people that have filled Roy Thompson Hall to capacity for yet another Monk debate. Bravo! Our topic is the key geopolitical question of the moment. We're going to think bigger thoughts. We're going to reflect on the nature of our society. Let's get this debate underway and our debaters out here on this center stage. These are big problems that we're talking about. Inner cities, failed education. What are the characteristics that you think that Trump has that can address these complicated, entrenched problems that you're saying that this informed, educated elite were unable to fix over the last 15 years. Give us a specific, concrete action that has resulted from this president that has undermined the institutions, the values, the norms of American democracy. Increased complexity, does it equal more fragility? Are we loading the system up with things that are producing these beneficial outcomes now but just as easily they could be reversed around to produce calamity. Is there a meaning to your green socks? I don't know, I just thought I mean, they I looked think, really good. I just think those are so cool. I mean, I feel Thanks. almost embarrassed Thanks. that boring black socks on them. I like Wizard of Oz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is a debate here, we've got an audience. Can we please get going? I want to pressure test you a bit. Give us some examples, some concrete examples of why you think, not that it's bad, but that it's over, that it's time has come. We got a lot of topics to cover. We spent a significant time on this. Let's all sit down for a moment. Okay. Take a collective breath and move on to the next aspect of this. What does Britain, what does Canada, what does the United States owe its European allies? Why isn't the technological revolution that we're living through an underpinning, a bulwark to the liberal international order? because its thrust of intention, in many ways, networks, connecting people, allowing people to talk across linguistic and national divides, would seem to supercharge liberal internationalism, not hold it back. Why is Yadlin wrong to think that there is this irrational, messianic force, maybe not amongst the Iranian people, but amongst the elite and the leadership who could make the decision of whether to engage in a nuclear conflict or not. This has been a terrific debate. I've been virtually superfluous as a moderator, and that's always a great <laughs> sign of a terrific conversation uh, and important issues being tackled. Keep watching, keep learning, keep reading. Thank you for joining us at the Monk Debates.